After a week of stressful news and pure chaos with WWE because of Monday Night Raw, there may be some light at the end of the tunnel. As we know, Vince McMahon returned to Raw and ran the show leading to a ton of bad news. Superstars were reportedly unhappy, scripts were being rewritten and torn throughout the show, segments were cut during the entrances, and it was reflected on the show because it was a disaster. Fans called it the worst Raw episode of all time, and that is saying something because there's been a lot of bad episodes in the past. With that being said, SmackDown was the complete opposite last night. As I said before SmackDown yesterday, Fightful Select reported that higher ups believed and hoped that SmackDown would return to the Triple H show, and it did. It was a great show that featured tons of good in-ring action, story progression, and overall it felt like a Triple H show. Even better news is that Vince McMahon wasn't at the show in Portland. According to PW Insider, Vince McMahon was not backstage at SmackDown last night, but he received creative plans for the show remotely. There were minor changes made to the original script, but nothing major. While it was slightly concerning that he made some changes, they were apparently only minor and it didn't disrupt the entire flow of the show like it did with Monday Night Raw. While the backstage morale improved, PW Insider reported that this is a wait and see kind of vibe. With Vince McMahon's unpredictability, talent needs to see consistency. WWE made sure to let everyone know that Triple H was in charge with a line on commentary from Michael Cole. Cole said, Triple H, one of the all time greats and now running this place. WWE heard the backlash and they wanted to reassure fans and talent that Triple H is still running things. I think it's looking like Raw was a one time scenario because Vince McMahon was already in LA because of WrestleMania. Let's hope that is the case and I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. In other news, Triple H's big announcement last night was that the WWE Draft is coming up real soon. There was a lot of speculation as to what he was going to say. Was it going to be his farewell speech or was he going to address the audience about the Vince McMahon news on Raw? That did not happen. He just talked about the success of WrestleMania and said we got to move past it because there's a bright future for WWE. And then the WWE Draft came up and we should expect that in a few weeks. According to Worked Wrestling, the draft is expected to take place on May 8th. It sounds like this is going to be a more traditional draft like we saw in 2002 or 2016 rather than just a superstar shakeup since Triple H mentioned that every wrestler is eligible for the WWE draft. That sentence alone tells me that this is going to be a better format than the past few years. He also said that this would truly change the game. I'm excited for it, and I also hope that we get a couple new general managers along with it. That would make things even spicier. WWE has been missing GMs for some time now, and they got a return. The other day I spoke about how WWE and Drew McIntyre have not been able to come up with a new contract agreement. Things have been getting even worse since then because according to Wade Keller, he said, We alluded to this that there's been talk that he's unhappy with his current situation in WWE and I'm hearing it's kind of a mix of creative and money and what kind of offer he's getting for a renewal. That does not sound good. I understand his frustration. Drew McIntyre, I think, is worth every penny. I think he's a great talent that you just can't lose. So you gotta push him and pay up. However, that might actually not happen and they might lose him because Keller continued and said, it sounds like WWE is taking seriously the possibility that he's gonna let his deal run out rather than agree to something that he believes is less than he deserves or less than what he thinks he has coming. WWE has one more year left to do something to convince him to stay. They need to act quickly and make sure that they can get him to resign. It got even worse when Keller said that he was supposed to be on SmackDown last night. Keller said he was going to be at SmackDown and now he has been pulled. So I think that situation will probably, based on what I'm hearing, be decided pretty quickly one way or the other. Wade Keller did say that there could be another reason for this though. He said there's a chance that he was pulled from SmackDown in part because he is just really physically beat up from that match and so not having to travel and him getting a day off was sort of given to him either at his request or the medical team in WWE just said yeah with what he's been through he should have some time off. I don't like the sound of any of this. I really hope that WWE works on getting things right with Drew McIntyre because as I've said many times now he's a great talent 
and I really view him as a top world championship main event kind of guy, and you really can't lose that because you really don't find it too often. So listen up, WWE. Make sure you can get Drew McIntyre to re-sign, and if that means paying up, pay up the damn money, and if that means giving him a push, give him a damn push. It doesn't even have to be a world championship. Give him the IC title because that title has a lot of prestige right now. SmackDown was really good last night, so I do want to talk about it because, you know, you want to talk about what's good. And it kicked off with a banger. Imperium took on the Brawling Brutes in a six-man tag team match. When you put these six guys in the ring together, they never disappoint. I really think Gunther is the real deal. He is ready for the world championship. Sheamus is also somehow, I don't know how, but he's in the prime of his career. And everyone else in that match knows how to put on a good match. It was great. Moving on, WWE is continuing the subtle storytelling of Jey Uso and the Bloodline, and I love it. I can't wait to see Jey Uso finally leave Roman Reigns and leave his toxic ass. Ricochet and Ivar put on a good match in the time that they were given. I really like how WWE is highlighting Ricochet's athletic ability and strength in a smart way. They're not like pushing it, they're kind of just doing it organically so the audience will naturally root for him. That's the right way to do it. These are the types of matches and wins that Ricochet needs. Rhea Ripley and the Judgment Day came out to the ring next, and Rhea spoke about how she's going to take over the women's division, something that a lot of champions say when they win the championship, that are heels. While Dom, on the other hand, got nuclear heat. The fans did not let this man speak at all, and it's really great to see him getting that kind of reaction. He is really blossoming into a star. When he first showed up in 2020, I thought that Dom was not that great, but now he's becoming the star that he was born to be. It's really nice to see his progress over the last few years. Then the LWO wrestled Dom and Damian Priest in a solid match. It looks like the LWO is also getting over with the crowd organically. You love to see it. Rhea Ripley and Selena seem to be entering a program very soon, and I think that should be a fun feud. And to finish the show off, Jey Uso faced Sami Zayn in another really good match. This show was full of awesome wrestling. It ended with Solo Sokoa showing up and spiking Sami Zayn when the referee wasn't looking, the same way he did with Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. Jey Uso won the match, and at the very end, Solo Sokoa was going to continue beating up Sami Zayn, and he did, and he was going to hit him with another spike before Jey Uso stopped him. And I really thought this was going to lead to something special, but then Jey Uso just super kicked Sami Zayn. I didn't like that at all. I thought this should have led to Jey Uso finally beginning to free himself from the bloodline, Roman Reigns, and becoming a better person. And then all that went out the window with that super kick. I guess we're going to have to wait and see what does happen. Anyways, Matt Riddle did show up and he saved Sami Zayn from the bloodline because they got some beef from before he left. Overall, this was a really good SmackDown and moved the stories forward, which is what you want to expect from a wrestling show. And it gave us good wrestling, which is something you want from a wrestling show. So I do want to say good job, Triple H, and good job, WWE. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.